I was first taken back by Ed Potter, New York City, working on a dot com, and his title was Director of Information Visualization. It was remarkable to understand that there was a blend between art and information that was very compelling. The way that you structure data so that it has some value and meaning and relevance is wrapped in information, and the information, if it's structured correctly, really motivates and challenges us to change and react. Take, for example, raw material, raw graphics, raw number, and you end up with a dimensional value of length. Certain growth of the information that we generated from just raw material. The Incas, they also had a system of linear knots that they tied on strands to identify quantities and uh, they would be able to use this as an accounting system. Not really too emotionally promoting, uh, uh, but it did a, give a good sense of uh, information. Raw data means absolutely nothing. It's just irrelevant. Unless you start to put in some headers, some titles, and give some relevance to the fact that information can actually have some meaning. When we begin to take a look at information and start to structure it in a meaningful way, we start to think about how we can actually start to think in the concept of information. Looking at data, the ubiquitous pie chart, <laughs> no matter how beautiful the data is, how delicious, it means nothing, lacking total value whatsoever. But we see it everywhere, and we tend to relate to this some importance. We're, we have satisfied ourselves to think in two dimensions, university students, first year. This is the type of math that we accept as part of our educational requirement. But the Chinese high school students, in order to get into a university, must use three-dimensional thinking. Thinking critically in three dimensions puts an advantage in taking a look at how the world is really structured and how we really could perceive the valuable information. 1861, Joseph Menard, the transgressions of Napoleon into Russia, back into, into Poland, shows a tremendous graphic of six variables, which is one of the greatest testaments against war. Third dimension analysis of 2.5% of all the water in this planet is fresh drinking water. How do we actually address the value and the use of that and the preservation of that, given the recent events? Brazil produced a fabulous graphic here about the corn industry. And in this three-dimensional, 12 different dimensions and statistics really identifying the whole industry of globalization. How about looking at uh, the simple web design, uh, taking a look at uh, the organization of a website? Isometric, three-dimensional perspective gives a little sense of relevance, a little bit more so than just a two-dimensional flat plane. How do you add more information without more data? Put color. Color does differentiate and gives priorities and gives responsibilities. However, the misuse of color. In this graphic that we're going to see, 1943, the Japanese relocation map, really confuses and blands out the entire emotional event that happened during that day. Color can be used, and color can be abused as well. However, it's not all so tragic, but you take a look at this beautiful graphic that we can have available on our phones. I made a lecture of the uh, economic crash of October of, 80, of 19, uh, 2008, and was able to show the different stock markets and how they crashed simultaneously. This is an emotional graph showing the depletion of sea life with the increased consumption of our fishing uh, around the world. If three-dimensional graphics don't motivate you, then what will? One can really see all the data. Gapminder has a beautiful thing, gapminder.org. You can throw in multivariables and you can see graph actually move through time in real time by just giving a scale and you can see just a tremendous amount in another dimension, which is the dimension of movement of data. Uh, this is uh, the cholera epidemic of London was actually solved visually by this map that actually was able to overlay the deaths and the water pump sources. How about our footprint from pollution outside of our planet? 
Does that grab you in any way? Is there any way that that motivates any one of us to do anything? My premise is two-dimensional thinking will not. Three-dimensional perspective just may help us out. Thank you.